share some announcements with us this morning. I want to welcome everybody, first of all, from uh, uh, the, the Facebook Live and also uh, uh, free conference call. We uh, thank those for joining us from afar. And uh, I pray that uh, in the midst of all this stuff going on, that uh, uh, people's hearts will be turned back to Christ as the reason for Christmas. Amen. Yeah. That uh, we'll be focused on Him and, and uh, uh, thank God He is the Prince of Peace. And uh, we, we thank Him for that. Um, next Sunday is going to be the last Sunday uh, for uh, bringing in toys for the Urban Mission. Uh, so if anybody's going to do that, if you just bring them in and stick them in the uh, foyer on the uh, uh, one of the pews and we'll get them down there. Uh, also, I uh, want to thank everybody for coming out and helping us get the church decorated. And uh, you see we've been busy. And also, uh, before you leave today, we'd like to present uh, all of the ladies with a, uh, a poinsettia uh, to take home and enjoy for Christmas. And so make sure uh, you get one of those before you go uh, this morning. They're the little ones. Yeah, the, the, the ones, uh, one. the smaller ones up here are all alive. So we want to take the live ones and uh, uh, let you enjoy them at home. Uh, also, uh, tomorrow night, uh, we're going to be having our church board. We've had to delay it because of everything going on. And uh, uh, those of you who can come make it tomorrow night at 7. Uh, we'll meet upstairs, and um, uh, Jim and Jill cannot be here, but we're going to do it by Zoom, so um, uh, we'll get some things taken care of uh, for that. Also, the United Methodist Women uh, have canceled their uh, uh, December 13th uh, concert and that, so that won't be taking place because of uh, problems with the virus. So um, uh, you can take that off of your calendar as well. And then also for those that are joining us this morning from Facebook and uh, free conference call, we're going to be having communion today. And uh, we invite you to uh, join with us. Uh, just make ready, uh, you know, uh, have uh, your bread and, and uh, uh, juice ready and you can join in communion with us this morning. In Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 through 9, he says, For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. The government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom. To order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Now, that's a prophecy speaking about the coming of Christ, but it's also a prophecy concerning the fact that no matter what's going on in the earth today, God is still in control. He is still on his throne, and his kingdom is still being established, and we will see his government and peace upon this earth with no end. All of these things will take place. We can rejoice in that, that no matter what happens on this earth, uh, we can rest in him and know uh, that his kingdom of peace is ultimately going to reign and rule in all of creation. Amen. Amen. So let's pray this morning and uh, go to the Lord as we uh, prepare to uh, have this service this morning. Father, we again, we just want to thank you this morning. We thank you for this day that you've given us. We thank you, Lord God, for your word. We thank you, Lord, that you are the sovereign God, that you rule and reign throughout all of creation, and that ultimately, Lord God, you have already fulfilled the greatest part of your promise in sending your son, Jesus Christ, to be born a child and to come as a king upon this earth. And we thank you, O God, that because you have already fulfilled this part of the prophecy, you shall also fulfill the latter part of this prophecy, that your kingdom of peace is going to reign upon this earth, that you will establish it, and uh, we will reign with you through all of creation. Lord God, we want to thank you 
uh, for this morning, for the privilege of gathering together to worship you and to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise for all that you do and all that you are. We thank you, O oh God, for your mercies that are new every morning, for your abundance of grace that you pour upon us. We thank you, O oh God, for your precious Son, which you have sent, that we might have life eternal. And Lord God, we just want to thank you for your word and your spirit. We thank you for your Holy Spirit who comes to lead us and guide us to all truth, to minister unto us, even as we minister unto you. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you will come and touch each and every one of us. Lord God, you bring healing and deliverance and peace to our hearts and souls. Lord, we want to commit this time into your hand, that your will be done, that your kingdom come in earth as it is in heaven. We thank you, O God, that you perfect your will in this place as you minister to us and bring us into the greater image of Jesus Christ and make us your instruments upon this earth to do your will, and to bring forth your kingdom and power. Lord, we surrender ourselves to you, and we give you all praise and glory and honor for your wondrous gift as we approach this celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ. Lord, we love you, we appreciate you, and we thank you for all of these things, especially, O oh God, as we celebrate the Prince of Peace on this Advent Sunday. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Praise God. How many here enjoy blessings? Should be everybody, amen? God, doesn't everybody just enjoy blessings? Because the blessings of God are amazing, aren't they? Amen. In Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22, he says, The blessing of the Lord makes one rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. He's not just talking about financial blessings. He's talking about the blessings of God that make us rich with peace, with hope, with joy, with all these things that we celebrate, and, uh, particularly this time of year, and uh, put ourselves in remembrance to uh, these things are the blessings of God that we can uh, enjoy richly. And like he said, he adds no sorrow to it. God loves to bless his children. It's written all throughout the Bible. But let's take a look in the second Corinthians chapter nine, verse six, and see what Paul tells us about God's blessing. He says, but this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap spirit sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. God has set up a system, a spiritual law. Sow less, reap less. Sow more, reap more. If a farmer wants a greater harvest come fall, what does he do? He plants more seed. Why? Because more seed creates more harvest. It's a natural law. God is so good that he has set in motion that same law in the spirit. More seed equals a greater harvest. So when we give today, let's remember greater seed, greater harvest. Let's make this our confession today. Lord, I, today I bring my gift to you. Lord, today I bring my gift to you. You said in your word. You said in your word. If I sow sparingly, I will reap sparingly. If I sow sparingly, I'll reap sparingly. And if I sow bountifully, I will reap bountifully. And if I reap <laughs> I believe that with my gift today. I believe with my gift today. That I will receive a harvest. That I will receive a harvest. And so I sow bountifully into your kingdom. And so I sow bountifully within my your kingdom. And I stand in faith on your word. And I stand in faith on your word. To receive my harvest. To receive my harvest. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus name. As Bob comes to uh, receive the offering, I always want to uh, also invite those on Facebook Live. Uh, we have a website at sugargroveumctoronto.org. And uh, if you would like to help uh, sow into the uh, ministry of the church, you can do so. Uh, there's a uh, donation button on that first page. Amen.
just thank you for the privilege of giving into your kingdom. We thank you for these gifts. We ask that you would bless them, sanctify them, and multiply them for your kingdom purposes. Lord, we thank you as we sow abundantly, we also reap abundantly. As you give us seed to sow and bread to eat, as you meet all of our needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Lord, we God, we just thank you for your blessing upon this, this offering that will be used for your kingdom purposes and bring increase all across the world. We thank you and bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to celebrate communion this morning. And uh, again, we're doing this a little differently. Um, I want to begin in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28 through 31, where Paul exhorts us, But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy, unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. Again, communion is a sacred service, and we want to prepare our hearts and minds before we partake of communion. And so we want to take a moment and let's examine ourselves and uh, make sure that there is nothing that separates us from God. We have an advocate in heaven. He tells us if we, uh, if we should sin, if we would confess our sin, uh, that he forgives us and he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. So let's take a moment and go before the Lord and just uh, ask God to search our hearts and uh, uh, ask him to forgive us for anything that we may have said or done or thought and uh, partake of our communion appropriately this morning. Father God, we want to thank you as we celebrate in the communion of the body of Christ in remembrance of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Lord God, we, we recognize the admonition which you give us that we should approach you with clean hands and pure hearts. So Lord, even now we pray that you would send forth your spirit as a lamb. And search us, O oh God, and see if there be anything in our hearts. See if there be anything that is displeasing to you, Lord, or anything that we may have done. And Lord, we thank you that you're a compassionate and forgiving God. And so, Lord God, we stand before you this morning. We, we, we ask your forgiveness, O oh God, for whatever you reveal in the sight of us. You would just cleanse us from all sin and unrighteousness, purify our hearts, cleanse our hands, and prepare us, O oh God, as your holy church to receive communion worthily before you, as we acknowledge the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us from all sin. And Lord God, we just thank you for this. We give you praise and glory and honor for your long suffering and patience, your compassion and mercy. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Let's pray together. Our Father, Father which art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy, be thy name. name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy, thy will be done. done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 through 13, I'm sorry, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 16 and 17, he says, The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ. For we, though many, are one bread and one body, for we all partake of that one bread. 
As we pass out the elements this morning, we ask that everybody would uh, hold them and uh, we will uh, partake together as we pray over each one. We also ask that as we uh, bring the elements around, that you would just cup your hands together and uh, we will drop them into your hands. Um, both the cup and the bread are wrapped and uh, to uh, uh, deal with uh, any issues. So uh, I'm going to ask Bob if you would come and help me. Amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 and 24, Paul says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the body, the, the, for the body of Christ, which has been broken for us. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. We do this in remembrance of him. Amen. Then they took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. In 1 Corinthians 11, he says, In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the cup of the new covenant in the blood of Jesus Christ shed for the remission of our sins. You have made his soul an offering for sin. He has borne our iniquities that he might justify many. We do this in remembrance of him to proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this great salvation and eternal life that you have provided for us through the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power 
For you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. We thank you, our holy Lord Jesus Christ, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your own blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. And you have made us a kingdom of priests to our God, and we shall reign on this earth. Remember your church, O Lord, to protect it from evil and to perfect it in your love. Make our light to shine ever brighter, that you might be made known to all men upon this earth. Blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Amen and amen. Praise God. I'm going to ask uh, Bob, would you come and uh, just receive the uh, brass from these? We also want to take some time this morning to pray uh, for the needs of people. Uh, I want to continue to be praying for Mabel and her loss and uh, let's just continue to be lifting her up. Uh, anybody else have any prayer requests this morning we need to uh, remember as we pray? Yes. Anybody else? Debbie? Um, Bob Jeff is in hospice, and Chris came down to see her yesterday, and they're giving her a few days to a week, so we'll be taking care of the family when they come in. Okay. Amen. Anybody else? All right, well, let's lift these up. Um, seems like this year is, is tough for everybody particularly around the holidays when you lose loved ones. So uh, let's just uh, pray and ask God to, to uh, be with these families and uh, provide the comfort that, we, that they need. Father God, we come to you this morning and uh, we just want to lift up all of these, Lord God, that have lost loved ones. And uh, Lord, it's just uh, such a greater weight during the holiday times, but Lord, we thank you that you are a God of comfort and love, and Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit, who is our comforter. We ask that your Holy Spirit be with each one of these families, with uh, Mabel and her family, with Nora, her family, Raymond, and uh, Bob's uh, ex-family, that all of these would just be surrounded with your presence and power that you would just strengthen their hearts and just be with them in your mighty presence to take them through this grieving process, to help, O oh God, to uh, get through these holidays with the absence of ones that they love dearly. We thank you, O oh God, that uh, you are able to give us peace in the midst of a storm, that you're able to give us joy in the midst of heaviness. And so, Lord God, we just pray for your surrounding them and being with them in a special way during this time. We pray, O oh God, for all of those that are suffering in their bodies, uh, so many that are dealing with various sicknesses and diseases. But Lord God, we thank you that you pronounce yourself to be the Lord, our healer. 
that Jesus Christ bore our sickness and disease upon the cross of Calvary, that by his stripes we are healed. And Lord, we just pray your special touch upon all of those that are suffering. We pray, O oh God, that you would just eradicate this virus and that you would just come against all of these uh, various sicknesses and diseases, infirmities, Lord God, that are just weighing heavily upon so many people. We thank you, O oh God, that you would work your miracle-working power to heal and to deliver bodies and minds, to bring soundness and completeness, Lord God, to your people that you make us living testimonies of the greatness of your power, even in the midst of everything that's going on upon this earth. We thank you, O oh God, that Jesus Christ came to deliver us from the curse of the law in order that we might be free from these things. Lord, we just want to commit each and every one, every family into your hands, that you keep us and guard us in your mighty power. Protect us, Lord. Give us, give us your angels charge all around us, O oh God. Keep us, Lord, from every pestilence, every sickness, and every disease. Surround us with your love and comfort. We thank you for your goodness, the land of the living. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Praise God. Well, again, this is uh, second week of Advent, and uh, this is the uh, candle of peace. In Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, again, he says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The Bible tells us in Hebrews that Jesus came after the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek was, in the times of Abraham, was the king of Salem. And that word Salem means king of peace. That word peace comes from the Hebrew word shalom. It's a common greeting among the Jews, even today. All through the New Testament, we find over and over again, uh, Jesus and the writers of the New Testament greeting one another, peace to you, showing just how important it is to a life of joy. That word shalom has the meaning of safety and well-being, health and prosperity and favor which is why they greet themselves using that word. The New Testament word also means peace, and quietness, rest, and prosperity. Definitely something all of us need, especially in these days. Real peace is not just the absence of conflict, but it is rather a place of well-being, a place of rest, a, a place where everything seems right in our lives, free from fear and anxiety, in a time where everything around us is filled with conflict and fear and anxiety and uncertainty, the one thing we all need in this time is peace. And not just any peace, but the peace of God that can only come through his kingdom in us. In Luke chapter 17, verse 20 and 21, it says, When Jesus was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, see here or see there, for the kingdom of God is within you. In Romans chapter 14, verse 16, Paul says, Therefore do not let your good be spoken of as evil, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Through the redemptive work of Jesus Christ, he delivers us out of the kingdom of darkness, that kingdom of conflict and sin, and he brings us into his kingdom of righteousness, peace, and joy. And at the same time, that kingdom is formed within us as we partake of the divine nature of God and are filled with his Holy Spirit. In Luke chapter 2, verse 14, he says, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. At the birth of Jesus, the angels proclaimed the coming of peace to this earth. The primary purpose of God's salvation was to restore peace between God and man. In Luke chapter 1, verse 79, he says, To give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. 
This is the good news of the gospel. It is the gospel of peace. In Acts chapter 10, verse 36, he said, The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. In Romans chapter 10, verse 15, he says, How shall they preach unless they're sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. Without God, there is no peace. In Isaiah chapter 48, verse 22, he says, There is no peace, says the Lord, for the wicked. True peace can only be found in God. He is the source of all peace. In Ephesians 2, 14, he says, For he himself is our peace. Sin separates us from God and therefore separates from peace. Without God, we can never find true peace in this life, especially a peace that endures even in times of trouble. As we read in Romans, only as we have the kingdom of God do we have righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Without this, we are moved by everything around us. We live with constant battles of turmoil and fear and anxiety. The reason is that as long as we are living in sin, we are the enemies of God and we are under the power of Satan who opposes God. In Romans chapter 8, verse 7 and 8, Paul tells us, because the, because the carnal mind is at enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. That enmity keeps, at, keeps us at odds with God. We are in a constant tension with this God of peace, and that tension robs us of the true peace that we need. We were created in the image of God, and we cannot be made complete apart from God. Without God, there is always going to be this emptiness within us which nothing else can fill except Him. It is an emptiness like the loss of a loved one. God created us to be a part of Himself. And as long as we are separated from Him because of sin, we have no real peace or joy. We live in a world of conflict, of turmoil, and hurts and pains. We live in a world of violence and bloodshed. It's been this way ever since the fall of man. As John tells us, the whole world lies in wickedness. Notice what Jesus said about this world in John 16, 33. He says, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Jesus tells us that as long as we live in this fallen world, we will have tribulation. We don't need to look very far to see that this world is filled with tribulation of every sort. It is under the sway of Satan who comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. He steals our peace and joy. The sin of this world produces fear and anxiety and turmoil within us. But the good news is as Jesus tells us that in him we can have peace because he is the Prince of Peace, who came to bring peace upon this earth, who came to bring peace between man and God. Jesus came to remove sin that steals our peace. Through the redeeming work of Christ, he both restores peace between us and God, and he also imparts peace into our lives so that we can enjoy peace within our hearts, even as we live in a world of conflict. In Romans chapter 5, verse 1, Paul tells us, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. In Colossians 1, 20, he tells us, And by him, by Christ, to reconcile all things to himself by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Through the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ, we are washed and delivered from all sin, and we are reconciled back unto God, brought back into that re intimate relationship with God, having made peace with us. 
we are no longer at enmity with God. And through that work of Christ, we are brought into covenant with God. In Malachi chapter 2, verse 5, he says, My covenant with, was with him, one of life and peace. And I gave them to him that he might fear me. And so he feared me and was reverent before my name. God's covenant is one of life and peace. Through this covenant relationship, not only does God make peace with us, but he also gives us life and peace in everything that that life entails, all of the blessings of God. He does this by delivering us from sin and giving us a new heart and a new spirit and filling us with his Holy Spirit. In Romans chapter 8, verse 6, in the Amplified, Paul says this, Now the mind of the flesh, which is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit, is death. Death that comprises all the miseries arising from sin, both here and hereafter. In other words, when we are separated from God and we are living in this world of wickedness, we have nothing but misery to look forward to. Because again, it's under the rulership of Satan. But then Paul says, but the mind of the Holy Spirit as is life and peace both now and forevermore. Through this redemptive work, God delivers us out of this kingdom of darkness and he brings us into the kingdom of peace. In Romans chapter 8, verse 9, he says, but you are not living the life of the flesh, you are living the life of the Spirit. If the Holy Spirit of God really dwells within you, directs and controls you. As long as we live a life in the Holy Spirit, He will keep us in that peace. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 25, He says, If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. We are called to be both filled with the Holy Spirit and also to walk a life in the Holy Spirit. Paul tells us that the true sons and daughters of God are those who are led by the Spirit of God. By living a new life, being submitted and led by the Holy Spirit, we will have a life of peace and joy as long as we abide in Him. The Spirit of God produces the fruit of peace within us. He keeps us abiding in the God of peace and also leads us in the way of peace. In Galatians 5.22, Paul tells us, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. In other words, as the Holy Spirit dwells within us, He produces this fruit in our lives. He has a way of keeping us in that love, joy, and peace of God. This world will always try to steal our peace and joy, but Jesus gives us His peace, a peace which we cannot even fully comprehend, a peace which can bring calm and assurance to our hearts no matter what we face in this life. In John chapter 14, verse 27, Jesus says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. In other words, as long as we keep our trust in Jesus, as long as we keep our eyes focused on things above, focus on Him and His kingdom, He has a way to keep us in a peace that we cannot understand. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 7, Paul says, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. No matter what we go through in this life, there is a peace of heart which will get us through. It is the peace of God which keeps our hearts at rest in God, free from fear and anxiety. How do we maintain, how do we obtain and keep this peace? As we have seen, we receive the peace of God through the redeeming work of Jesus Christ. But we maintain and walk in the peace of God by keeping our hearts and minds fixed on Jesus, seeking Him 
in his word and prayer and maintaining an intimate devotion with him. The more we know him, the more we will trust in him, the more that we will have faith in him, and therefore, the more we will experience peace in our lives. In Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3, he says, You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. We can't comprehend it all. We can't understand how God does it. But God is able to keep us in a perfect peace, even when everything around us, everything in this world is going crazy. God has a way of giving us peace in the depths of our hearts to get through anything we face. It is a perfect peace that comes as we keep ourselves, our hearts and minds, stay upon him, trusting him and believing him because he's a God who loves us and a God who has a future and a hope for us. We keep our eyes fixed on the things that are eternal. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 15, Paul tells us, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you are called in one God, in one body, and be thankful. Faith in God keeps the peace of God ruling in our hearts because we look to him who is an ever-present help in trouble. And we know that God is able to do anything and everything as long as we stay fixed on him. In Mark chapter 4, verse 39, when Jesus was in the boat with the disciples, and the storm came and the wind began to blow, then he arose and rebuked the wind, and he said to the sea, Peace be still! And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. The Bible says he is the prince of peace. He is the king of peace. He just speaks the word, and the storms will cease. The same Jesus who spoke to the wind and the sea will speak to our storms as we keep our hearts and minds stayed upon him in faith believing. Let us not be like the disciples in the boat, O oh, ye of little faith. But let us be a people with hearts filled with peace because we have great faith in the God of peace. And he will get us through to the end as we stay upon him. Amen. He is the Prince of Peace. He is the God of Peace. Amen. So let me ask you this morning, do you have peace in your heart? Amen. Or are you filled with fear and anxiety? Are you able to rest in Christ when trouble comes your way or turmoil surrounds you? We live in troublous times, but you can have the peace that surpasses all understanding through faith in Jesus Christ. Again, peace begins with reconciliation to God, and it continues in a life of peace as we abide in Christ and live a life in the Holy Spirit. To everyone who puts their faith in Jesus Christ, he gives you power to become the sons and daughters of God. And with that sonship or daughtership, he gives you his Holy Spirit as proof that we are the children of God. His Holy Spirit will fill you with all peace and joy in believing that your hope may abound even in times of need. We can only receive the Holy Spirit of promise through faith in the saving work of Jesus Christ. Salvation can only come through repentance and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. You must begin by acknowledging and confessing your sin to receive the forgiveness of God. And then we must surrender ourselves to Jesus Christ and through faith receive his promise to cleanse us in his blood from all sin and defilement. To remove that stony heart of sin and to give us a brand new heart and a brand new spirit, a brand new nature. And as we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our hearts that God has raised from the dead, we will be saved. And then he fills us with his Holy Spirit so we can begin to live a new life for God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you sent your only begotten Son to be born in a manger, to be born of a virgin, 
to be a redeemer who would give his life as a sacrificial lamb upon the cross of Calvary in order that all those that would put their faith in him could be washed from sin and reconciled unto you as a newborn creation to have the peace of God in us and with you. God, we thank you that you sent the Prince of Peace. We thank you, O oh God, that your kingdom is a kingdom of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That we have that kingdom in us even now. And I pray, O oh God, that you would help every one of us, even in the midst of all the storms and trials of this present day life, to abide in that place of peace as we keep our hearts and minds focused on you. Lord, fill us with a divine hunger and thirst to seek you in your word and prayer, to maintain a life of devotion as we gaze upon you and keep ourselves stayed on you, that we might have your perfect peace no matter what we face in this life. I pray, O oh God, that those that don't know you that you would open their hearts even now to hear and to heed this gospel of peace. That they too, Lord, might deliver, be delivered from the turmoil of this world and brought into the kingdom of God. Lord, I pray that you add daily to the church those who are being saved, those who are being redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you, O oh God, as we go out of this place today, that you continue to be with us, to keep us and protect us in your grace and mercy. We thank you, O oh God, that you continue to keep us in your perfect peace. You continue to meet all of our needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And you continue, Lord, to be an ever-present help in time of need. We love you and bless you and praise you. And we give you all, all glory and honor and blessing this great gift that you've given to us, Jesus Christ, your Son. In his name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. And as Bob prepares, let me just bless you this morning from Romans chapter 15, verse 13. And now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.